So the review we're doing now is going to be very much like the chapter six test. The first part that I'm going to give you um, is without a calculator. So problems one, two, and three will be on the first page. Let's go ahead and solve those without a calculator. For problem number one, remember what you're asking. For number one, A, what power would you put on a two with an eight? Now, eight is two times two times two, so the answer to that is three. Number 1b, what power would you put on a 5 to get 1 over 25? Well, now let's think about it for a little bit. Uh, 25 is 5 squared, and so if we wanted to flip it, we would need to use a negative power, so that's negative 2. C, because we don't see a base there, that's a base 10, so what power would we put on a 10 to get 10,000? What's great about uh, powers of 10, just count uh, how many places or how many zeros you see, so the answer is 4. But in D, if you have a uh, decimal value, you just have to count how many places you are to the right of the decimal, and that's your negative, because that's really 1 over 100, and it, then it becomes very much like B. That is going to be 10 to a negative. For E, you just have to remember that an LN and an E cancel out, so that's just 5. For F, you just have to remember that um, 7 to any power, uh, or anything to any power of 0 is what's going to give you 1, so that's why it's 0. And then finally, you need to remember for g that we cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. If you tried to do it with a calculator, it would say error, and so that one's no solution. And then we're going to jump to the graphs. So make sure you understand problem number one. You will not be able to use a calculator, and you will not be able to use a calculator for number two and number three. Now, for a logarithm, it's going to be a little bit harder. So 3 is going to be a little harder than number 2. So let's go ahead and start the graph. For number 2, it's a little nicer. You want to think when you have something up there with the x's, where does that, for a exponential, where does that equal a negative 1? Where does that equal 0? Where does that equal positive 1? Well, to solve each one of those, we have to subtract 1 from both sides. So, our x's are going to be negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Now, when we plug those in, you just have to use, you know, the rules of algebra. It's going to go right here in our, to our equation. We're going to do the exponent and then multiply by 3. So, if we plug in negative 2, we get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves, or 1.5. If we plug in negative 1, we get 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And then finally, if we plug 0 in, we get uh, the first power. 2 to the first power is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Now, I would do that before I tried to answer those three questions. So let's just do our graph. Now, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote right here, and that is going to be the number y equals 0, unless we had like a plus 1 or a plus 7 or something out there, which we don't. So that's why this, have we moved it up or down? No. So our horizontal asymptote is 0. Now let's plot our points. At negative 2, we're at 1.5. At negative 1, we're at 3. At 0, we're at 6. Make your sweep. So all of your exponentials are going to be either swooping up. There's a negative out in front. It could swoop down. But that's the essence of what you're graphing your exponentials are going to look like.
Now let's look at a logarithm. Now a logarithm, have, we have to be very careful about what we plug in. We are not looking for when the inside equals negative one, zero, and one. We want to get answers of negative zero and one. Remember, they kind of flip-flop these things. So this time, we're going to look where does the inside equal the powers of three. And these are what you always want to think of. The reciprocal, one, and the actual number. The reciprocal, one, and the actual number. Well, if we uh, do the xy chart for that, x minus one equals one third. We would add one to one third. That's four thirds, or 1.3. We add one to one, we get two. We add one to three, we get four. So that will give us nice answers. Now, why does that do that? Well, if I plug four thirds in here, I get one third. The log base three of one third is negative one. Negative one plus two is one. Now, if we plug in two, we get the log base three of one. What power do you put on a three to get one? Zero. Zero plus two is two. You plug in four, you get three. What power do I put on a three to keep it a three? One, but there's a plus two on the outside, so we've got to add it to three. That, we get three. Now this one has a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is always where the inside, this is where the outside equals zero. This is where the inside equals zero. So where does x minus 1 equal 0? That's going to be that one. OK, so let's go ahead and do all that. So this time we have a vertical asymptote. Let's plot our points. At 1.3, we are at 1. At 2, we're at 2. At 4, we're at 3. So it's going to go away. You know, think about if we took this graph and then laid it kind of on its side. That's kind of a, a way to kind of conceptualize what the graphs are going to look like. So that's part one. You'll get part one, no calculator. And you'll get that before you're allowed to start part uh, two. Now we are going to start the portion that allows you to use a calculator. So you'll hand in part one, and then I will give you part two, and at that time you may grab a calculator. So for both 4a and 4b, we are going to use the rules that uh, b to a power equals a number can be written back and forth as the log base b of the number equals the power. So in part A, we're going to take the exponential and change it into a log. So the power equals the log base 5 of 25. In part B, we're going to go the opposite way. Our base is 4, our power is 2, put them back together. We're going to equal the number 16. So make sure you know how to go convert back and forth. Now in part A of number 5, we've been given an equation that models the deer uh, population. A sub t equals p times 1 plus r to the t. I uh, am going to give you that on the equation. If we stick in what they told us, we have a starting population of 205. We put in a rate as its decimal, 0.085. And uh, this time, uh, we know the t is 4. So you just plop everything into the equation. Because it's a real-life creature, please round to the nearest whole value, and you should get 284. Okay. Now in C, you might see that they use the word compounded monthly. Now, I'm not going to give you this equation. 
please make sure that you, you know, use A as a help. The only thing different about the equation in A and the equation in B is you are going to put a little N under the R and an N by the T. Now, what is the N? The N is how many uh, times they give us interest in a year. So if they say monthly, use 12. So in this case, let's plop everything in. So there, we're starting 8,500. That's 1 plus 0 0.042 divided by 12. And then uh, the power is going to be 12 times 18. Now, just be careful how you enter this into a calculator. Uh, try not to round too much. You know, I'd really leave those decimals hanging out there until the very end. And you get, because it's money, this time round to the nearest penny, hundred, eighteen thousand seventy-eight dollars and ninety-one cents. Now, the difference between B and C, uh, in B, they're using the interest formula that contains that compounded monthly, compounded interest, yearly, compounded daily. This one says compounded continuously. And that formula is the PERT formula, which you'll have to know by heart. Let's take the same information from B and stick it into the PERT formula, because we want to know how much would I have in the account and which account is better by how much. So we're going to put in the 8,500. That E is that 2.71828, or the button on your calculator. And our power is going to be 0.42. I'm sorry, I need to write that a little better. 0 0.042 times 18. And then if you do that one into the calculator, you can kind of tell if you're right, it should be a number close to B, but just a little more. So that's 18,102.79. Now it said which account is better, so this one is better because it's more. Now, if it was an account that they were charging you interest, like on a loan, that's one thing. But if it's your savings account, you want more. How much more? Just subtract them. If you subtract them on your calculator, it's $23.88 more. Okay? So those are the application problems that are going to be on the test. Now let's talk about expanding and condensing. To expand, we want to use the rules that when we uh, multiply, all the factors can break up to have their own logarithm if they're positive. When we add them together. If we divide, we're going to subtract those factors. So in the top, if we think that we have a factor of 2 and a factor of x squared and we're divided by a factor of y, take all the factors in the top, give them their own logarithm, and make sure those are positive. And then you're going to subtract any factors in the denominator. Now, the only thing left for us to do is use our power rule, which says if we have a power inside the logarithm, drop it down in front. So your final answer would be log of 2 plus 2 times the log of x minus the log of y. And there's nothing else you can do. That is your final answer. Now 6, I noticed that that fraction can reduce. The first fraction couldn't reduce in any sort of way. And why can the second one reduce? Well, check to make sure that if we factor it because we want it in factor form, and if we factor it and find any factors in the numerator and denominator that match, go ahead and cancel those out first. So you want that, that fraction to be as simple as possible. So then break it apart just like we did 6a. Uh, so it would be the natural log of x minus 1 minus the natural log of y to the fourth. Now if you recognize that 4 has a uh, power on it and you want to just drop it down in front, go ahead and do that. So we get a final answer of natural log of x minus 1 minus 4 times the natural log of y. 
We might notice we can't break up x minus 1. It is its own unique factor because we don't know what x is. We don't know how it relates to a natural log. That's as far as you can go. Now, in number seven, we are going to reverse the process. So the first thing you want to look for, are there any uh, front coefficients that can go back on as a power? So we're going to put the powers back on. So first, we're going to get the log of x minus the log of y squared plus the log of 3 minus the log of c to the fourth. Now, at this point, any um, positives can combine and multiply, and any of the, of the negatives are going to combine and divide. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring these together. All the positives multiply on top, all the negatives multiply on top. And if at this point the fraction can reduce at all, reduce it. And then let's do this last one, same thing. Put the powers back on. Put the powers back on. So we're going to put that 2 back on for the first term, the 3 back on for the second term. And then any positives are going to come together and multiply. All the negatives are going to divide. So we're going to make it a fraction. On the top, we're going to put the x squared y. On the bottom, we're going to put the x plus 2 cubed. We can't reduce that any further. I just always check, can I reduce my fraction? So those are our expanding and condensing. And then the last thing that's going to be on the test is going to be equations. So number eight is all about solving these equations. So that's the last thing that you're going to see on the test. So let's start with 8a. In 8a, because everything on the left side is contained in a log and everything on the right side is contained in a log, we can draw the log off the equation and it just becomes a simple equation, 2x minus 3 equals 5x minus 9. And then go ahead and just know what you know about equations. Go ahead and solve it. So I am going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. When I do that, I get 6 equals 3x, so x equals 2. Now be careful. You have to check that it gives you a positive here and here. You have to check the logarithm ones especially, but you know, just make sure you check them. Okay, so can I put 2 in here and do I get a positive number? 4 minus 3 is 1. Positive. Great. Do I stick it in here and get 1? I get 10 minus 9, which is 1. Great. Perfect. So 2 is our answer for number 8a. Now let's go ahead and look at B. Now here we're uh, going to eventually be able to use a similar technique as in 8a. In 8a we got the logs to match so we could take them away the equation. In 2 or 8b we're going to get the base to be a match of 2 and usually you're going to break down the larger number to match the smaller. It's pretty common. And so before we do anything, let's make the 4 a 2 squared. Now it's going to multiply by the 2x minus 7. So if those parentheses weren't shown, make sure that you put them there. So now we can drop those away. Not that little 2, just the big 2. And we get 3 plus x equals 2 times 2x minus 7. And it's just a simple equation to solve, you know, nothing too fabulous here. We get 3 plus x equals 4x minus 14.
let's go ahead and solve. I would probably subtract an x from both sides and add a 14. We're going to get that 3x equals 17. And then we're going to get that x equals 17 thirds. Now, if that fraction cannot reduce, then uh, just leave that fraction as it is. That's your final answer. So there is 3a and 3b. Let's take a look now at 3c. Now both sides don't have a logarithm. Both sides don't have a power. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this to exponential form and some good stuff will happen. Now let's remember our power, I'm sorry, our power is 4, our base is 3, and this is going to equal the number x minus 1. So technically we're going to start out going x minus 1 equals uh, 3 to a power of 4. Now 3 to a power of 4 is 81. So change it to its number equivalent, you know, it's full multiplied out form. So x minus 1 equals 80 full, 81. Sorry. Subtract 1 from both sides. No, we're going to add 1 to both sides. Sorry about that. We get x equals 82. It's a logarithmic equation. Always stick it back in the equation. Does it work? 82 minus 1 is 81. What power do I put on a 3 to get 81? 4. There you go. Okay. Now, probably the hardest one of all of these, I would say, is um, D. Now, the reason D is a problem is that 2 and 3 are exclusive primes. They don't have anything in common. We can't switch one to the other. And we have to go through a very specific uh, process to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to stick a natural log on both sides. Now, why are we going to do that? Well, the natural log of 2 is just a number. The natural log of 3 is just a number. We're going to do that so we can drop the powers down in front. So what we're going to do is we are going to drop the powers down in front. So we're going to get x times the natural log of 2, just think of that as a number, equals x minus 1 times the natural log of 3. Now we need the x's to one side, the numbers to the other, so we need to distribute in the natural log of 3 uh, over here. So we get x times the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 3. Now at this point, everything that contains an x, we're going to put to one side. Anything that doesn't contain an x, we're going to leave on the other side. So we're going to get x times the natural log of 2 minus x times the natural log of 3 equals the negative natural log of 3. Now those are not like terms. We can't add them together. So Factor out an x. Now, if we think about it, if I said to you, what is the value of the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 3, you'd get out a calculator, you type that in, it's just a number. So because it's multiplied by x, we can divide that number off and get rid of it, find our answer. So x is just the division of the negative natural log of 3 divided by the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 3. I don't know what that is. It's a number. You know, it's some kind of decimal value. I don't expect you or need you to put it into your calculator. So just leave it. So that's probably the hardest equation on this section. Now, we just have two more. In E, we've seen one like this in uh, both our homework and the notes from 6.6. Six. So if you want to revisit that, there will be one like E on the test. This is one where I use uh, U substitution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let U equal this smaller power. And the reason I do that 
is because this is going to be what u squared is. It's double the power. So that I get something pretty nice. I get u squared minus u minus 110 equals 0. I know how to solve that. Hopefully you do too. Um, that's a quadratic that can be solved by factoring. If you can't factor, you can always use a quadratic formula. This is going to be u minus 11 and u plus 10 equals 0. Once you have it split apart, you're going to set each factor equal to 0. So u minus 11 equals 0 when u equals 11. u plus 10 equals 0 when u equals negative 10. Now we're not done. Now remember, we let u equal e to the x. That's important. So now we have to stick the e's back onto our equation. Where does e to the x equal 11? Where does e to the x equal negative 10? Well, e to the x is never going to equal a negative number, so that one's gone. The only thing we can solve is the left one, e to the x equals 11, and we do that using a natural log. If we stick a natural log on the left side, the e goes away, we get x. If we stick a natural log on the other side, the answer is natural log of 11. So that is your answer for that. Now our last type of equation on the test is one like f. If you have separate logarithms, you first want to condense them together. So a positive condenses by becoming multiplication. So that condenses together if we take 5 times 5x squared minus 1. Once they're both condensed, we may drop them away. So the, the logarithms, we can drop that off. So we get 5 times that quantity is really just 25x squared minus 25 equals 56. Add 25 but, uh, to both sides. We get 25x squared equals 81. Divide off the 25. Take the square root. Don't forget, you got to put the plus or minus. Now this one's nice. We can take the square root of 81. We can take the square root of 25. Just take the square root of both. Oh, I didn't do that, did I? I'm sorry. Uh, the square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 25 is 5. Now, you got to put it back in. Do we get a true statement if we put it back in? If you put in 9 fifths, positive 9 fifths, the only x is here, it squares, becomes a positive, it works. If you plug in 5, uh, uh, negative 9 fifths, uh, you, when you square it, it becomes a positive times 5, you know, it works. So both of those happen to work. So our answer is positive or negative 9 fifths. So that is the equation section of the test. So the test is going to cover everything you see here, equations, and some word problems, expanding and condensing, converting to log in exponential form. So that is the calculator portion. So you may have a calculator for those. And then the uh, initial part you're going to get, you can't use a calculator. It, and it looks very much like you see one, two, and three. So that is the review. Please study. You study math by doing math. So go back and look at the examples again. Try some of those. Try some of your homework. Try this again. Can you do it without me? Okay. There you go. Thank you.